Today's video takes place on one of Scotland's most beautiful and renowned roads, in the presence of one of Scotland's most beautiful and renowned mountains. I thought this would be a perfect spot to talk about creativity, something that I think is really important within creativity, but is often overlooked in photography, sometimes even frowned upon. So let's go. Now this channel is all about photography. And something a lot of people don't know about me is that I was a touring musician in a band for 10, 15 years. We were on TV, we traveled Europe, we were on Radio One. You know, we were really successful for a DIY band with no management or anything. Now we wrote original music, music that didn't really sound like any other band. But that's not how it started. You see, as a teenager, I would learn note for note, sound for sound, tone for tone, other people's music. That's where I figured out how to play music. And while a big part of writing music is experimentation and creativity, hidden within that thing that you create is the genius of everybody that you learned from. See here? This pathway is a good example that you know, I'm just following other people's footsteps and just going where other people went. And somewhere along there, I'll deviate and do my own thing. But right now, I'm just following other people. And that's because a really great way to learn something is to copy the things that inspire you, or at least use those as little checkpoints that you can uh, absorb someone else's journey, create something, and hopefully over the years, create original things so that other people can absorb what you're bringing to the table. See, I bought this book um, a few months back from a, a second-hand bookshop in Hay on Wye. And I was always coming on this trip up here. And as soon as I saw this picture here of the mountain behind me by John Parminter, this was the adult class winner of Classic View. You see this? mountain is probably the most photographed mountain in all of Scotland, probably the UK. It's because it's so beautiful. But you see a lot of photos from it, but this picture for some reason just inspired me. It made me think maybe I will go find that pool when I come up here on this trip. Now you can see the conditions are totally different. For example, in this photo you can see that maybe there's ice on this pool. There's definitely frost on the rocks. There's sun hitting the top of the mountain from this side, which means this must have been taken in the winter, in the morning. And just by looking at this photo and examining parts of it, the things that make it unique, the thing that makes this, I guess, a winner, is honing my skills as a landscape photographer because I'm having to think, okay, so when am I gonna visit this location? Where is the sun coming up? Where are these pools? What is the foreground gonna look like? All of these things are actually reasonably advanced things when it comes to landscape photography. And as I've always said, I'm not here to tell you how to take photographs. I'm here to talk about my journey as someone who wants to spend the rest of my life living in the outdoors, taking photos of this beautiful planet that we live on. So my mission right now is to try and find these pools. Um, they're gonna be over here somewhere. Now this looks quite similar, but I don't think this is the right pool, but it is a pool. And the point is, is that uh, I'm gonna take a shot here because I've seen something that works and now I've seen the real location that I think could work too. So let's take this photo and see how it comes out. In case it's not clear, I'm not trying to replicate the photo. I'm using it as a guide to teach myself more about composition, to give myself some training wheels to help me learn more. So right now, the problem I've got is, I think that, I'll just take this picture so you can see, right? I think this is a little too wide for me, so that means I'm a bit too close, which means I'm too wide. So I'm shooting at almost 20 millimeters. I think if I came back a little bit and, um, you know, and then zoomed in, it's gonna compress it a little bit more and that'll give me probably more of what I'm looking for. The good thing is I'm, I'm right by the road. <laughs> I went for a hike all around there and I found this spot and I'm right by the road. So if I want to come back here in the winter, really early in the morning, or even in the summer, really in the morning, then, um, you know, that's, it's pretty doable. I could do this on the way to somewhere. Nice. So now 
I'm further back, I'm zoomed in and I'm higher up. And I just take this picture. The trouble is the camera's, um, the camera's too tall for me now, I can't see in the viewfinder. If I snap back between the first and the second shot, you can see what I mean about that mild compression effect from zooming in slightly. The mountain just looks a little bit bigger as I zoom in more. The downside is that I'm not able to exclude that little bit of ground in the foreground as I could in the first one. I've changed now and do you know what? I really like this, I think. This is quite different to the photo that I saw. Well, it's not, it's the same mountain with a pool in the front. So, you know, compared to the Eiffel Tower, this is basically the identical shot. However, in landscape photography terms, this is quite different because now this is kind of running through the clouds coming in. This this will be clear, but it's over here. There's a part like that. It kind of goes this shape, and I want to show that, but I don't think it's going to clear. I've got to take this picture now. I don't think I'm going to get what I want exactly, but let's just take it, okay? I think I found a composition I'll come back to one day. In this shot, I cannot take my eyes off of the foreground. There's just simply too much going on. But the clouds came in and that was my fun over. The rain came as well. But thanks to the inspiration from John's shot and all credit where credit's due there, I got a step closer to getting something that I might want to put on the wall one day. And so just like the way I learned music, I've taken something that inspires me. I've used that as creative fuel to kind of get me here. And then I found something that is different but you can still see where it came from. If I put the two together, you can see that the shot that I found, or at least the composition that I found, derives from the one that inspired me. This is how creativity works. I've always said that like, there's, a, there's a way you learn how to learn. And I've learned lots of different skills in my life. And I've always learned by finding something that inspires me, trying to replicate it, and then branching off from that point to something which further inspires me. And the other thing is, in the most basic terms possible, if you're trying to get outdoors, this is your ticket here. Find a place that you know that you can just go and shoot because it's hard to travel a long distance unless you have something in mind, something that you, can know, you know you can take home. You can guarantee taking this shot home, this composition home. This is your ticket here. And at the very least, if it just gets you outdoors, that's, that's all you need. I really hope this message resonated with you. This is maybe a little bit different to the usual videos I make, but I thought this message was important. So uh, yeah, do all the things like subscribe and check out this video next if you want to see more about the adventure that we're on in Scotland. Thanks very much.